but I was happy to look from afar. I was very surprised about Jenny Key's revelation because I was actually involved in two meetings that she had with John Lennon. That's the friend. <laughs> I used to tell people off the record about Jenny Key, who became subsequently a very famous designer. So I was surprised, having kept my peace all these years, to find five years ago, Jenny Key says, I slept with John Lennon. After I heard she slept with John Lennon, I thought, well, yeah, how can you get any better than that? <laughs> with a love like that, you know you should be blind. indeed um, well the next number will have to be our last number for tonight so yes I either realised I was a bit strange when you know at Festival Hall I'd be there screaming out I love you John I love you Paul I mean maybe it was my turning point in my life <laughs> when we got into the concert something happened that really took me by surprise and that is that Ian started to scree scream and squeal like a girl now to see a guy screaming like a girl is very unusual to see lots of girls all you know, going crazy was one thing. And I got really concerned for him because he was hyperventing and, and it, it was quite frightening. A St John's Ambulance guy came up to us and said, I think I'd better take you out to Ian. And I got up and said, I think he'll be okay. I'll settle him down. So I settled him down. And then Ian got worse. So the St John's Ambulance guy came back and said, I'm going to have to remove you from the, from the stadium. And I got up and I must have had my, my f uh, fist clenched which looked like I was going to punch this guy, but I wasn't really. I must have just had my hand like that. And the security guard saw this and uh, got our arms and twisted them up our back, mine and Ian's, and then threw us out the door. Um, I was kicking that door, screaming, let me back in, you know? Because the song, ironically, that I liked so much wasn't actually a Beatles song. It was Long Tall Sally, which Paul McCartney sang at that time. And uh, I was just devastated there. I could hear this, you know, refrains of this inside and I was outside. And Ian just lost it. I thought we were going to have to take him to hospital. He was screaming and banging on the door, and it was a sight to see. Manager Brian Epstein told a National Press Club luncheon today that he hoped he would be able to return to Australia with the Beatles if they could maintain their present popularity here. Mr Epstein was not able to give a date, but he thought it would be at least a year before they would be coming back. I immediately think of a kind of Woodstock in wheelchairs. That I think the, 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 by trying to reunite the Beatles and um, you know, reinvent Beatlemania, um, I think it's a triumph of nostalgia over common sense. They were of their time, they were completely fantastic. The only motive 
uh, reuniting the Beatles today is mercenary. If they reform, what are they going to do? Are they going to be cutting edge? Are we going to get, you know, a techno dance hit out of them? Or maybe, you know, a contemporary rap song or something like that? Of course we're not. We're going to get sweet harmonies and a sort of sense of deja vu. It's just going to be another exercise in nostalgia. And it's going to basically undermine the most significant thing about them, which of course was that they, for their entire career, remained at the cutting edge of popular music, inventing that cutting edge as they progress. I would hate to see though them going out on the road. I, I really would. I, I just don't think that's, um, I, I just, I mean, Floyd, OK, and, 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 and you know, other bands, even the Eagles, but I just would hate to see the Beatles without John Lennon. The, you know, that would not be the Beatles without John Lennon. You're really looking at the people, aren't you? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. You're very aware of everything around you. Yeah, I think you've got to be. You know, you might get shot. <laughs> That was special, that was the 60s, and I don't, and I'm, I'm glad I lived through it, and I don't think uh, that will happen again. So I don't think it was so much them, as much as it was us. I think the phenomenon had a lot to do with our innocence, and the way we wanted to see, maybe the Beatles, as talented as they were, and as bright and fresh and vital as they were, were the right people in the right place at the right time, for our coming of age. Let's not underestimate the importance of them. They're important, but I don't think that you can really lay the claim that they changed Australia. Well, they changed me, and I'm an Australian, so perhaps they did change Australia. Well, that about says it all. They won't be playing God Save the Queen tonight. The Australia of 1964 is just a memory, gone forever. Thanks to four young blokes with funny accents, funny suits, funny hair, and a funny knack for changing our lives. Good night. Why did we love the Beatles? Answer, because they were young when we were young. Fabulous time in my life that you look back and you smile. They were a very important part of my life. I love them. Four young natural boys who suddenly stepped into my life and uh, in a way changed everything forever. I think that it was the first time I ever did anything really bad that my mother told me I shouldn't do.